Godoy in with a challenge. They've got a penalty. Godoy penalised. Luquinhas down. And the New York Rebels from the spot have got a chance to save their season and keep their playoff run alive. Welcome to Instant Replay Decision Day Edition. It's our final episode of the 2023 regular season. I'm your host, Andrew Wiebe, and as always, we're taking a closer look at the most controversial refereeing decisions in Major League Soccer. We start in Cincinnati, where the Shield holders have nothing to play for, but Atlanta are playing for seeding, and as it turns out, access to their very best personnel in the first round of the playoffs. 51st minute, Tiago Almada already on a yellow card, and what is he doing? Watch the right side of the screen here. Almada, here's some mascara and a little back and forth. And Almada decides, yep, I'm going to stick a foot out and kick mascara off the ball. Now, the kick isn't hard. It's not particularly malicious, but it is a non-soccer play. I don't see excessive force or brutality, so no straight red card. But this is unsporting behavior by Almada and a clear second yellow. Joe Dickerson, the referee, shows it. Yellow card, red card, Almada. Suspended for the first game of the first round against the crew. All right, to Nashville we go. Red Bulls in town, and they are desperate. They needed a win to ensure their place in the wild card round. Three plays from this game. The first in the 13th minute. Was Alex Mouil fouled on this play in the box by goalkeeper Carlos Coronel? I say no. Same as Lucas Spala, the referee. That looks like a convincing fall, but if you look closely at the actual point of contact, I see very, very little. To me, this is not enough to bring Wheel down, and I'm good on this one with no call. Play on. It gets a little bit more complicated in this scoreless match in the 85th minute. Daniel Edelman is trying to block a shot, and the Red Bulls midfielder does it right off that left leg, but the ball bounces off the turf, and Edelman, who had his arms straight up in the air, brings those arms down and he hits the ball. The question as to whether or not there's contact between hand and arm and the ball is moot. There is. The question is whether this is an unnatural position for his arms. Had the ball hit his arms in the initial shot when they were outstretched, for me, 100% a handball and penalty. But as he's coming down and bringing his arms down to provide him balance, there is gray area. On first look, my gut said, boy, that sure looks like an unnatural position given how far away his arms are extended and how that left arm swings down toward the ball. But I don't think it's deliberate by Edelman. I think he's just trying to find his balance and it's not a shot on goal. So on the balance of things, I'm with Lucas Spall and the referee crew. Though this one is a bit of a toss up and it depends on your opinion, I would prefer no handball in this situation. That was the call on the field, and penalty was the call on the field in the 92nd minute. And a ball, Godoy, diving in at the top of the box on Luquinhas. This is a clear penalty, folks. The Red Bulls get the call. John Tolkien gets the penalty. He buries it, and New Yorker headed to the postseason for the 14th consecutive season. All right, no existential stakes in New England where the Revs hosted the Union at Gillette Stadium. We'll see this matchup again in the first round in the 4-5 game. Depending on the scoreline, New England could have gotten home field advantage in the first round. That wasn't to be with a 2-1 win, but there are two plays to take a look at here. The first, in the 16th minute, is the Union opener by Julian Carranza. The first question is, did Jacob Jackson foul Mikel Ua on this play? And I say no. I see Jackson getting a touch on the ball and not enough contact between the goalkeeper and the attacker to call a foul. But the second question, and this is the big one, is whether or not this goal is offside and whether it should have stood. After watching it repeatedly, I say no. It gets a little complicated, but remember, offside is about the second to last defender's positioning. It doesn't matter if the last defender is the goalkeeper or another defender. Watch closely when Julian Kronza plays the touch off Mikko Ua that comes back to him. When that touch occurs, it is Ua and one Union player in behind. That would put Ua in an offside position, and in my opinion, this goal should not have stood. I think Ua was offside. But as it was called on the field, there was no review initiated by VAR David Barry, and the goal stood. And well done in the 23rd minute. This is a clear handball on Damian Lowe. Remember, I said if Daniel Edelman had had the ball strike his arms on the initial play when they were outstretched away from his body and over his shoulders, it would have been a handball. Well, that's what Damian Lowe does with that left arm. Clear handball, clear penalty. Well done by Tori Penso. To Vancouver we go for the Richie Larea game. Nobody in Major League Soccer, heck, maybe the world draws PKs like Richie. 
We have two here to look at. 12th minute, Ryan Hollingshead dives in, Larea goes down. No call on the field from Fotis Bozakos, but Yunus Marcacci, the VAR, flags him. Bozakos goes to the monitor. Yes, PK. I understand why Hollingshead is frustrated on this one. Definitely looks to me like Larea takes a step with that right foot into the area that Hollingshead is diving. But Larea has possession of the ball and Hollingshead goes down early. When you go down early like that and you make contact with the attacking player and this is not insignificant contact, that's going to be a call to penalty. For me, it's a good call. And I'm also good with this call in the 72nd minute when Diego Palacios goes through the back of Larea again. Larea is inviting this contact. He knows he's going to win the race to the ball. Palacios is thinking, okay, I got a shoulder to shoulder here. But Larea sneaks in front of him and turns a shoulder to shoulder into a shoulder into the back. And once that happens, Palacios is going to be called for a penalty every single time. Georgia Collini may not like it, but I think this is a pretty clear penalty. Pair of plays in St. Louis. First off, the 66th minute VAR ruling that took a penalty away from the home team. Nico Joachini goes down. Jeremy Rufo initially calls the penalty, but Edwin Jurasevich sends him to the monitor. And as you watch this closely, folks, I just don't see very much contact at all here. And if there is any, I think Joachini's the one that steps into the Seattle defender. Well done to the crew. They said no penalty after review, and I agree. And I don't see a red card on Nico Ladero in the 93rd minute, despite St. Louis City supporters sending it to me and saying, hey, that's violent conduct. Let's rewind this all the way back for full context, producer Phil. Ball's down in the St. Louis end with Seattle closing down a victory on decision day. St. Louis are frustrated. Jared Stroud, as you can see right here, is frustrated. He goes through Alex Roldan, starting off a big discussion between both teams and a whole lot of posturing. So that's the starting point. Eventually, fast forward, fast forward, yada, yada, yada. It gets to a point where Jared Stroud is now yelling at Nico Ladero, who is not backing down himself. Ladero does raise that left arm up, and Ladero's elbow goes up into the collarbone and a little bit of the neck, you might say, of Stroud. Stroud goes down like a ton of bricks. Jeremy Rufo says, oh, no, no, no. Come on, guys. Let's finish this game and get on out of here. And I think that's the right decision, all things considered. It's just good game management. For me, there's not excessive force or brutality from Ladero on that play. He doesn't strike forward with the arm. I don't see the force that Stroud is implying by going down like that. And given all the things that had just occurred, I understand why Marufo said, guys, it's the end of the match. Let me blow the final whistle and get us out of here. And we end with one final Lionel Messi goal of the season. Inter-Miami's campaign may be over, and Messi did not actually get to celebrate this goal, but just watch the chip, folks. Now rewind it back, and yes, he was clearly offside. Well done to Guido Gonzalez Jr., the referee, and his crew on that one. And thank you so much to anybody who flagged the call for us this season. My editor, Phil Lavanco, and I truly appreciate you. For our producer, Rich Hernandez, and Phil, who does all the work around here, I'm Andrew Wiebe. We'll see you next time in the playoffs.